Hi everyone, my name is Veronica Marquez. I'm Vice Chair of ASQ Montreal and part of the organizing committee for this year's ASQ Canada and Greenland Quality Conference. On October 4th and 5th, we will be discussing risk and resilience. And to do so, we are thrilled to present two keynote speakers, 12 different conferences, workshops and networking opportunities in both English and in French. And for the first time ever, we are introducing simultaneous interpreters. Today, I'm happy to introduce Craig Shalestowski and Ken Eakin, who will be presenting a conference called Practical Approaches to Risk in the Office, a Lean, a Lean Perspective on October 5th. Hello, Craig. Hello, Ken. So can you tell me, how did you get interested into this topic? Sure. First of all, thanks for inviting us, Veronica. Really appreciate it. Um, I led the, uh, the Royal Canadian Mints Lean and Quality Systems uh, Transformation about 20 years ago, I started. And what, in, in our journey, what we found was that we made really great strides in uh, streamlining processes and dealing with risk in the factory, in the plant. And uh, so we were really, did some really impressive stuff early on. But what we found was that when we tried to apply some of these same principles in the office work, in the knowledge work, that uh, we were running into a lot of resistance. So we had to study this and we had to try to figure out the root causes of why this was. We realized that our language, our, our approach, our tools just weren't calibrated for the office. So, um, and it was getting to the point where our office processes were holding up um, our enterprise level results. So it was really mission critical that we figure this out. So what we did was we made some adjustments and um, our first major, uh, major uh, business process that we improved using these approaches was our new product development process. We got it from one year down to 90 days and sustained it for well over a decade. Uh, so we learned a lot from those uh, from those lessons. Uh, have a lot of scars. So we were really um, that's kind of how we got into this. And we're going to in uh, the presentation we're going to get into and in the workshop we're going to get into a bit of what some of those tools are so people can can unpack them. Uh, Ken, what about you? Yeah, thanks, Craig. Um, well, I you know I, unlike Craig, I, I haven't worked in a, a factory really. I've spent my entire life working in offices first in the uh, shipping and logistics. Uh, industry, uh, where I worked for many years with, a, uh, with the world's largest container shipping line, and then uh, afterwards with a financial services uh, company, uh, really a crown corporation here in Ottawa uh, called EDC. And in both these cases, I had experiences where outside lean practitioners, more experienced than I, had come in and were using you know, stuff that they had learned from manufacturing and we're dropping all these Japanese terms and we're like talking about, uh, you know, widgets and, and you know, making things to spec and all this kind of stuff. And, and it, like Craig's experience, it really like lost, it, it kind of lost the audience. It went over their heads uh, or under their heads or beside their heads, but they didn't get it. They didn't relate to that kind of uh, lingo. So, I mean, I, I saw that there was a tremendous amount of value in lean and it, you know, there's a tremendous opportunity to make things you know, work better, to reduce risk, to build people's, you know, to use people's skills and all that kind of stuff. But you needed to use the language, you needed to like really apply it in a different way. So I was really motivated to uh, you know, like find that language and find some examples. And, you know, I ended up even writing a book about it, um, uh, about, you know, trying to translate lean that, that kind of, I don't know, resides in the manufacturing world still to this day, the vast majority of it is manufacturing based, um, and try to translate that into sort of office friendly concepts. I think we could uh, keep talking about this for ages and ages. Tell me, what can the participants expect from attending your conference? Well, you know, the, the first thing is really like, what, what is the language that you, you should use? What are some of the approaches we can uh, adopt that are different from shop floor practices, perhaps? But what are some of the practices that we can adopt to really connect with office workers? Um, you know, uh, kind of learn their language or at least learn some of the, the language to avoid so that we don't press those, those buttons. Uh, uh, you know, the second is to, to bring in this, this theme of, of risk in the office to understand that continuous improvement both 
kind of introduces new risks and mitigates risks. And, and what I mean by that briefly is, is that, you know, often we're afraid, afraid to try things. People in offices like everywhere are afraid to try new things. And so improvement is scary. So we have to take some risks, but continuous improvement uh, and lean practices can help make that seem less scary. And, uh, and as a result, we can actually take out risk from our processes and take even greater risks as a result. So we'll get into that and how, you know, uh, uh, this paradox of kind of, you know, continuous improvement seeming risky actually will take risk out of your processes if it's done right. Um, as well, we'll be, uh, we'll be looking at, uh, we'll be sharing uh, a bit of our toolkit. Um, so we have uh, an FMEA, uh, Failure Modes Effects Analysis, tool that we've used and really adapted for the, uh, the knowledge work office type of environment. So we'll be showing how that works and how to facilitate one of those sessions virtually and even um, offering the uh, participants um, access to that toolkit so they can use it afterward. Um, and uh, getting a little bit into the concept of uh, treating improvements as experiments where they're, they feel less risky. Just the very language we use makes it feel less risky and more likely to, to be something you can try out and, and gather some evidence on in the future. So getting them, getting them interested in the, first, in the first part by meeting them where they are using the right language and then um, giving them some tools around how, uh, how you can actually facilitate one of those risk assessment exercises in the real world with real office people, uh, physically or virtually. Well, that's certainly going to be a very interesting conversation to have. I'm looking forward to listening to the two of you at the conference. Thank you for your time today. Thank you for participating in the conference this year. And on behalf of the entire organizing committee, we look forward to seeing you all at the conference on October 4th and 5th. Please visit www.asqcanadaconference.com to see the program and to get your tickets. Thank you. Mm -hmm.